is our pastor there, Mr. Tracy. So good job, buddy. All right, y'all, come on, stand up here. Y'all help us out, okay?
accurate thought, but it's quite wrong. Because that wasn't the last supper. Sup is a word that means actually to take the bread and to dip it into whatever it is that you're drinking nearby. And when Jesus said, sup with me, he was referring to taking that bread and literally dipping it into the wine, so to speak, and then partaking of it. I've actually uh, had the occasion uh, once or twice to be able to actually sup with other people. It's a, it's a unique experience. We don't do that. You know, we, when we pass out these little bitty square crackers, it'd be a little bit hard to dip that in your little bitty mini glass, you know? But what we are going to do tonight is we're going to take these elements as a reminder. Because see, let me tell you what Jesus did that night. He took the bread, the Bible says, and he broke it. He looked to heaven and he blessed it. He broke the bread. And then he passed that bread around for them to partake. And I love what a friend of mine did years ago in one of those times that I did get to actually sup with someone. I, like so many others, reached up and grabbed a little pinch. And he said, no, 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 take a handful. Because he had this huge loaf of bread. And he made us all take a handful. And I thought, what's the big deal, man? You know, it's communion. It's only supposed to be dainty. That's what we've been taught all these years. And so I took my handful of bread and we ended up supping together, all of us. There was about maybe 20 or 25 of us standing around the field that day. We were at a huge convention up in West Virginia and we just happened to be out in the middle of the field that day talking, a bunch of us were, when all of a sudden one of the professors that was uh, uh, making one of the presentations during that weekend just shows up with grape juice and bread. <laughs> hey guys, what are you doing? Let's have communion in the middle of the field, you know? But again, it was wonderful what he was there to do. He was doing the same thing Jesus was about to do that night. Jesus took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it. Then he took the wine, he blessed it, he passed it around. And he said, take this bread, this is my body, broken for you. Eat it all. Kind of makes sense. Take this wine, this is the blood of the New Testament. My blood shed for the remission of your sins. Drink ye all of it. I think it's important that you understand that. Because we take these little menstrual elements, if you will, and we say, well, we've, we've done our part. And I agree, to a point, we do our part. But let me tell you where we do our greatest part. Is that when you hold these elements, and I'm going to lead you to do this in just a short period of time, as you hold these elements... I'm going to remind you to do something. Remember. Because that's exactly what Jesus said to the disciples that night. He said these words. This, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. You'll even see that on a lot of communion tables. I think our table out there in the front foyer actually has that on. In remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. What is the point of communion? It's not just another part of a certain service. It's an opportunity for you to remind yourself his body was broken for me. His blood was shed for me. He died for me. Say that with me. He died for me. Say that one more time. He died for me. And that was the purpose of the manger. So that 33 and a half years later, he could die. To be continued. Katie's going to sing a song, gentlemen, as she does. I'm going to ask you to help me pass the bill and tell. And as she's singing, feel free to uh, take your element as it comes by you and hold it in your hand. Do not partake until I ask you to do so, please. Just do it. Okay, go ahead and pass them. Mm -hmm.
Take the elements. Don't ask me why I'm about to ask you to do what I'm going to ask you to do. But take the juice in your right hand. Take the bread in your left. And I want you to hold them up where you can just kind of look at them. And I want you to say these words after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I take time now, I take time now to, remember to remember that you really did, that you really did give your body, give your, your, body and your blood, and your blood just for me. I thank you for it. And I consider you the greatest gift that I could ever have. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll take the juice, please. And the bread.
to another section. <laughs> this is one of my favorite parts. Jesus said, No man lights a candle and then hides it under a bushel. My granddaddy, bless his heart, I can remember a number of Christmases ago. I was, well, Betty and I were visiting in Rona. I don't even think our sons were born yet, so this was quite a while back. Our oldest son was like 33. But uh, in the middle of the night at some point, I remember a big, huge banging on the, the bedroom door that Betty and I were asleep in, and I remember then hearing my granddaddy say these words, Son, I need you to come and help me. And I went into the kitchen, and bless his darling heart, he was cooking the turkey in the oven, and somehow it had caught fire, and it was just blowing fire all over the place. And he was freaking out because he couldn't figure out how to get it out. And I very calmly, this is strange for me because I should have been freaking out myself, but I very calmly said, where's the lid, granddad? He said, what do you need to I said, just hand me the lid, granddad. He handed me the lid, and I put it on top of it, and it extinguished the flame. You know why? Because it cut off the supply that the fire needed to continue to burn. Now listen to what I just said. Covering the flame cut off the supply that the fire needed to continue to burn. Jesus said, when you light your candle, hold it so that all can see. Obviously, he wasn't talking about this little thing in this little plastic vessel. He was talking about our lives as Christians. But so as to help us understand this tonight, we're going to take these candles, and I want you to watch what happens as we do this. I'm going to light my candle. I'm going to go over here and help them light theirs, and then I'm going to come down and begin to help you light yours, and then you're going to help each other light each candle all the way down each pew. And at the proper time, these lights are going to go out, and you're going to see nothing but your little flame and thing. Right? Go ahead. I think you have a song to play, don't you? Go ahead.
another thing on the go, think about them with fire. <laughs> Take a look at what you have in your hand and hold it up a little higher. Now, one of these little flames together, now I've been told that in all actuality, that a single flame can actually be seen three and a half miles away in perfect darkness. Now, you know for a fact that you can walk into a dark room and light a match, and it seems like you've lit up the entire room. So it's one thing to have the single flame. Did you notice that as we were lighting the candles of others around us, two things had to take place. Their wick had to catch the flame, and you had to wait long enough for it to do so. But once it caught the flame, it was ready at that point to spread on. That's the crazy part about fire. Man, fire can start off in a little bit of area, and the next thing you know, it's engulfing an entire massive area. Where is our Christianity? Where is our love for Jesus? Because this is indicative of our love for Jesus. This is who we are supposed to be. Yes, a single heart in love with Jesus, but on fire. On fire with a flame that is inextinguishable. On fire with a flame that is meant to be spread around, that is meant to be shared. Remember those things. Isn't it cool too how you can look at the flame and then look away and you can still see it for just a period of time? See, you leave a lasting effect on all those whose lives you touch. And we're going to sing a very simple song together. <clears throat> You're going to know the words.
made by Roy and Mary, so be sure to tell them thank you. We have desserts and drinks. So please, even if you didn't bring anything, we want you to stay up downstairs in fellowship. Now there's two ways of getting downstairs. This way is much easier over here because there's a landing, so not that you can fall, but don't. There's a landing halfway and it's a little not as steep. And then you go back out the hallway. Somebody needs to turn those lights on out there. They don't turn those lights on back here. And then you go out there and first go on that. Okay? And come on downstairs and enjoy yourself. Don't go this way. There's something in the uh, in stairwell that will mess you up. Lord, thank you for this service. We thank you for all the great music. We thank you for the, the great time of communion. I just pray that you bless all these folks that came out tonight. And I just pray that you bless them. And I just uh, be with the food downstairs. Bless you boy. We're all preparation for tonight. And just take this food that we're about to eat and bless it to our bodies. Amen. Y'all can go on downstairs.